with the State of the Nation address tonight by President Cyril Ramaphosa, it's widely expected that he will touch on the issue of load shedding. Uh, let's continue to preview expectations ahead of that address. Michelle Craig uh, is at the City Hall precinct for us standing by. And Michelle, uh, it's all good and well that the City Hall will be exempt from load shedding, but it's the everyday South African, many of whom will not be able to see that address as we're deep in stage three load shedding. Yeah, thanks for that, Dudu. It's a strange irony, isn't it, that we're able to exempt City Hall from load shedding for the sake of the President delivering his State of the Nation address. Uh, warm welcome to our viewers if you're just tuning in to us here at our special broadcast um, on the Grand Parade just across from City Hall where the President will deliver his seventh Sona with seven more to go after this. Uh, William Adisha is uh, the Congress of the People's Deputy President. He joins us here in our satellite studios as we continue to get analysis uh, and, of course, the perspective of political parties as well on what Cyril de Ramposa will say for this Sona. Willie, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for coming on. Thank you very much. This is a different Sona, isn't it? Uh, by all accounts, we are declining on all of the major indices insofar as our economy unemployment, crime, violence, and health. This has to be a different one. It's extremely unfortunate. I must indicate that um, this has been the case over a period of 15 years. The State of the Nation addresses were uh, presented, but then nothing has changed after those particular uh, sonas. Uh, promises were made, promises were made, but nothing uh, was done. But then Following uh, to your question, uh, at the moment, what South Africa is faced with, number one, we are the highest, number one, when it comes to the poorest countries uh, of the poor uh, in the world. When it comes to unemployment rate, when it comes to uh, inequality, when it comes to corruption, we are up there. And uh, the president and the one that came before him have always given the promise that there will be a change. Nothing has changed altogether. Now look at the local government, uh, local governments, look at the provincial governments, look at the majority of the uh, uh, departments of parliament. The uh, auditors have said that there are problems here, corruption, but then the president has not done anything. Now that's a major problem. The question that you need to ask is where is this uh, money uh, going to? If I were to give you further examples of this, basic services like water, like uh, electricity, I know people concentrate on the issue of electricity only. The uh, uh, issue of low cost housing, this government has not succeeded. Albeit each and every year, the president will stand there and make uh, uh, promises. Look at the food, at food, uh, for example. People are not working. But here you talk about 60% more that the people have to uh, use to buy food. Yeah. Now, that's a major problem. The question then uh, should be, what must he do when he, um, after he shall have addressed the uh, uh, parliament? Yeah. And what must he do differently? And I suppose, you know, yeah. in the context that we're talking with COPE in the opposition benches. Yes. The question for opposition parties like yourselves is how do you use your seats in Parliament to push the agenda that you've just outlined? Look, it's a question of uh, uh, working with the people of South Africa. I can't say just political uh, parties in Parliament because some of the political parties there look within their own realms and not beyond uh, where they are. So what I will, we from uh, COP will uh, want to say is that the president must first make choices. Choices in so far as the uh, uh, political and state scenarios are concerned. At the moment, uh, we have no doubt uh, that uh, he is controlled from a particular position by a handful of people within his political milieu. And that is a major problem. Some of those people have been taken to Zondo Commission. Zondo Commission has been able to uh, rise and say, these are people who steal, these are corrupt people, etc. But then the president is unable to rise and deal with that. Yeah. Secondly, within that particular area, you have the states, the bureaucrats, 
who are working, employed by those particular uh, 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 people who are corrupt. And therefore, those people are so strong, I'm referring to the bureaucrats, are so strong even more than a government itself. Now, that is something that has got to be uh, done. Secondly, I am saying, and I've said this over the past 18 years, I've said this to him and to Zuma when he was in there, that they must reduce SOEs. Okay? You talk about more than 700 SOEs in the country today, but then very many of them are not even known in South Africa because they are not working. He must reduce that. I've said that he must reduce the uh, uh, departments because most of them, we don't even know them. Mm. Most of them just take uh, money. If you combine, you take the ministers, you take the bodyguards, you take the police that look after them, etc. You talk about hundreds of millions. Money which should be used to improve the lives of uh, the people of South Africa. Now, the other thing is that uh, we say that the monthly child support uh, a, 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 a grant must be raised. I know people have been talking about 350 rand, etc., etc. Now, if you look at the repo rate, you look at the inflation and so on, that is nothing. And the other people said about 600 rand and so on, still that is nothing. You must talk about more. And there's a lot of money here that is not used for that. We're saying that, number four, uh, the incapacity in both government and state must be looked into. Because, like I said, it's a question of saying, this is my comrade, and therefore my comrade must get business, my comrade must get this, and so on. And that is a major problem. And that's why uh, what ANC government does is to employ those whom it calls a cadres. And uh, you don't know if there is any a training center for the so-called cadres, if there is capacity in manufacturing that which the people of South Africa want. It's a major, major problem. But then, yes, the issue of electricity, the issue of energy is a major, major problem. Now, something must be done. But then we say that the, he must suspend fuel uh, duty levels. That's a major problem that people usually uh, don't, don't talk about. Fuel duty levels, the taxes, uh, in so far as that is concerned, are extremely high. Therefore, something must be done. But not only that, look at the diesel. It is too expensive. And if you must talk about energy, look at the issue of diesel itself. It is too expensive. He must do uh, uh, something. Now, crime and killing of people. Not far from here, just go to uh, the townships here, where you find more than 80 people being killed daily. Now, it's only here, but then if you look at the 61 million people around the country, how many are killed daily? It's a major, it's a major, major problem. He must deal with that. So the problem starts inside the ANC itself. Mm. Zondo was able to say, yeah, this uh, leader, here, yeah, this national chairperson of ANC, here, yeah, yourself, president, here, yeah, this so on and so on. These are people who are in the state. Why is he not taking uh, steps? We expect him today, here, yeah, mm -hmm. to say, this is what I'm going to do. And, and uh, it would be remiss of me to, okay. to ask you, Ms. Ms. Marisha, about you know, the role of COPE and the role of opposition parties. We're in an era now of coalition politics, right? We're in an era where South Africans are feeling disillusioned and perhaps going to the polls, those who have lost faith in the ANC will find it difficult to find a political home elsewhere. So parties like COPE, who in 2009 got into the National Assembly with 30 seats, we're sitting now with two seats. You've had a lot of infighting in your party as well. That could have been different, right? And you could have yeah. been pushing these points from a stronger standpoint. You are correct. Uh, we had 37 seats yeah. uh, when we came in. Uh, it was 30 in the National Assembly, 7 in the uh, NCOP. But then we have gone down, down, down uh, to two at the moment. Mm. Myself and our president are here. But then again, it is an open secret that which has been done to us by ANC is extremely sad. They sent people into our executive who did whatever they did. And... Uh, after they had done that, they were given positions of, uh, I mean, ambassadorial positions, 
some of them are in the ANC headquarters, some of them have been made uh, uh, members of parliament here. You have all those kind of problems. And if we had time, I would give you one by one, you know, 93 of them. Because they were sent. One was told, you go in there, destroy coal, because if you don't do that, you are going to jail. Because you have done this when you, it comes to uh, uh, the how train and so on. You have taken so much. I'm just giving you that example. Some were told, you destroy coal, and then we give you uh, uh, this, we'll give you a farm in uh, uh, this thing in Zimbabwe, here is 600,000 uh, US dollars. I mean, you have all those things. Now, it is just a sequel to that, that we are, of course, limping, but then we are rebuilding ourselves. This weekend, for example, uh, leaders of COPE from all uh, the provinces will gather in Johannesburg to say, this is what needs to be done, and we shall be able to move forward. What is it, 16 months to go until the elections? 16 months 15, to go. 16 months? Yes. Uh, it is too a small a time, but too big a time. Yeah. Because it depends, I must say, on the, uh, uh, you know, the intentions, on the obligations. What you believe is right is correct, so that you then can be able to organize. We'll be able to ourselves, because we are there from uh, a cope to go to the people and say, this is where we are. I mean, some of us, I was in the ANC for 31 years. Mm. Okay, uh, I led the workers for Oof, how many decades? Mm. We know where the problems are. They are being exploited. They are being destroyed. Now we know the problems. We shall go and tell them, both the workers and the ordinary people in South Africa, yourselves, when I formed, for example, your trade union. Uh, in my time, I mean, there were 33 uh, trade unions in Kosatu with 4 million members. Yeah. But now it has gone down. And uh, we have got to go out to the people of South Africa and say, this is where the problems are. Deal with these problems, and we have the knowledge. We know what has got to be done. I can promise you that. Cope's Deputy President, William Adisha, let me thank you for your time this You're morning. Welcome. The thank Congress you. of the People saying, don't write us off just yet. It's just gone 12.28 on this Thursday afternoon here at our live position on the Grand Parade in Cape Town. It's all part of our build-up to the President's State of the Nation address later this evening. Stay with us.